it's Hannah and today we're doing another flower arranging video with lots of purples and whites and just beautiful soft colors. Um, a few of the flowers that we have today to work with, this nice lace flower, and as you can see it has tons of laterals, so you're going to be able to do a lot with it. Next, we have Scabiosa. Now I have the pods, but it also comes in many different colors flowering, which are really fun to use. And these pods have a nice little crinkle texture. They also have the cutest little seeds inside. So feel free to use these in any way that you desire. Now, we have some gorgeous tulips. Tulips come in almost every color, so they're perfect for any kind of event that you have or just adding texture to an arrangement. The most fun part is that they grow. So each time, each day you come back to your arrangement, it might have a little bit more to it, a little bit more height, a little more interest. So they're very fun to use. We also have lots of this purple liatris. Now it's an aster family member. And it's one of the few flowers that has this nice tall purple look and it's very thin, it can create modern lines, but it also has a really traditional texture. So it's perfect for almost any arrangement depending on the way that you decide to use it. And we also have these kuntu leaves um, or um, sometimes I might use a nice palm as well. And then, of course, my favorite, Aspidy Shirley's. They're always perfect for any piece. Now to start, I chose two vases. The first one is this rectangular vase. It's about eight inches tall by six inches wide by two inches deep. And these vases are perfect for making a modern arrangement. It's something that gives a little bit more interest and allows you to work in the vase as opposed to just working with the vase. So to start, I am going to take my liatris. Now I already cleaned off the leaves that were going to go below the water, but you might want to do that to yours. And what I'm going to do is just placing these one at a time and spinning in a hand tied kind of motion. I'm going to create a nice grouping of these. And you'll notice it creates a nice little splay and this will help our arrangement to look nice from all around. So once I've done that, I'm going to take a little bit of binding wire and I'm just going to wrap it around and twist. I like to make mine really tight because I don't like my designs to fall apart. Just a couple twists. And then I just snip off anything that's extra. Perfect. Now, I'm just going to cut this down to size. So my vase isn't too tall. But you could do this in as tall of a vase as you want because these are a really tall flower. Now, I just place it inside my vase. Well, let me cut a little more. And I want this to fall at an angle perfectly diagonal. It's just like a fun way to make something with more interest, more of a different shape. Now, to add to it, I'm going to take my tulips. I really like using tulips in tall pieces because of their ability to grow. You may want to take off a couple of these leaves because they will yellow with time. There we go. Now that I have them all clean, I'm going to place them individually in the vase, following the same line that the liatris is on. That way I have this nice, clean shape inside the vase. And I'm going to make each of them kind of a different height because I want it to look like they're a little more fun and free-flowing. Now 
Just remember to keep your stems all in line. It will really pay off in the end if you get a nice shape inside the vase, again, vase as well. Now it's time for a little bit of an accent. You can never go wrong with a little palm or kunti accent. So for this, once again, following the same line, I'm going to place one of them right in the back of the piece. And this helps it to feel like it's not just open in the back and that it has a really good shape. With the second, I'm going to create a nice little twirl. So, using a little bit of spare wire, just going to make a nice little loop. And then you can secure this loop with a little bit of bind wire. And I just kind of twist this in place. It doesn't have to be, you know, too tight, but enough so that it's not going to fall apart on you. And this just creates a shape that you really don't see in nature. Just fun for a piece like this. And then you kind of look around and see where you think it's gonna go best. I want mine right in front, of course. And I'm making sure that my stem goes again in the same line. There we go. And we'll just fluff up the tulips a little bit. Awesome. Great, so let's move on to our second piece. Now for the second one, I chose this really small jar. It's about four inches tall and four inches wide. And it's just a really cute piece. You might find it at an antique store. Um, but you could use anything you have around your house. Now for this lace flower, since it has a lot of laterals, may take you a while to kind of break everything apart. Um, but I like to break each, each piece individually. And then bring them all up to the same height. I want this to create a really nice bouquet that kind of just looks like it's spilling over the edge of my vase. And just like with the liatris, I'm doing the same hand-tied motion. And you'll notice these tend to get a little bit floppy when they're out of water, but just recut them when they get home, maybe put them in a little bit of warm water, and they'll perk up right away. A little bit of floral food also helps, of course. You can never give them a, too much love. So just keep on spinning these little babies together. And at the end, there'll be no need to tie because they're gonna fall in the perfect way. Just keep on placing one after the other. Now the reason I'm breaking these now is because I can very easily cut them later. It's just there's a lot of them. So we'll just cut them at the end to bring them all back to the same height. Now that we have our nice little tuft of the Queen Anne's lace, I'm going to get everything out of the way so we can focus. So now I'm just going to cut this down to the perfect size. so that they'll reach just the bottom and then splay out perfectly. See a nice little tuft. Now, I wanted to use the scabiosa in here because it's a very garden-y look. And these are gonna be the perfect addition. And I'm just gonna place all three kind of in a little group. 
so that they make a nice big impact. Adorable. Then, take a little aspace relief. Mine has a little bit of salt on it, so I'm gonna take it off. Then I just bend it and pierce through both of the, the bends, like this. Then, just press both sides of the leaves in. Pat again. Then we're gonna place this right underneath the scabiosa to kind of make you look at it twice. There we go. And now we have two wonderful pieces to place around your home or your office. I hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll see you next week. Thanks.